Hey, Jerkle. Play this first. Love, future Rob. Not him again. No. No. No! Hello ladies and germs, it's time for yet another handheld family clone to sap your spirit and suck your soul through a straw. This week we're looking at the Family Pocket Portable Player Mi Pad 90. There's an Americanized version of this uh, made by another company that I don't think is very good. As I recall, it's got a bunch of ripoff games. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure by the description, that this has some actual, like, Famicom slash Nintendo games on it. So it actually stands a chance of having some decent gaming going on with it. So, well, we'll see. So, uh, FC, 260N, it says on the box. I don't know what that means. TV plug and play, two player. How's that work? Does it have a, does it have a, uh, an out? Maybe? I don't know if I trust that one. Only one AAA battery. Micro USB intelligent. Oh, so I guess I could charge it. Nim H or NICAD. Huh. Anyway, classic TV games, mini and special shape. I'm a little worried that it says classic TV games. That always makes me wonder whether it's just hacks. On the back, it says Family Pocket Portable Player. Uh, there's a description of the keys. It's on a, it's not the greatest contrast there, but you can see it here. Included in the gift box, portable player, double player pad, Micro USB player, oh, I'm sorry, cable, double cable, ooh, AV cable, and manual. Well, let's open this puppy up, shall we? Looks like it has some tape. Easy to peel off, thanks to the plastic packaging. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's neat. Got a little separate tray for this. What else is in the bottom of the box? Some cables. And that appears to be it. There's also a manual. All right, let's delve into this. All right, manual first. Ing. Same things it says on the back. Included in this package, same thing. Installation, make sure that the console is switched off before installing batteries. Remove the battery cover at the bottom of the plastic case. Paying attention, <laughs> it's another step. Paying attention to the polarity markings, replace the cover. You probably should have done that on the step where you put the batteries in, but whatever. Switch the on-off button to start the game. And more repeats of the same stuff. What is... Oh, that's the back of the player, I see. Only use NIMH or NICAD rechargeable battery. Huh. Well, that's it. Not very exciting, is it? Look at... So if you have two of them, you can hook them together. You see this? That is pretty cool. Too bad I don't have two of them to test that. Oh! Missed chance, missed chance. Cables. Look at that, that is a micro USB as opposed to the mini. And a standard RCA two mini plug. Here we have the device itself. It's fairly light, has a D-pad that, uh, you know, the D-pad looks good, but it doesn't, I don't know, it, it's not terrible. It might stand a chance of being okay. It's got a little bit too much mush in my opinion. 
Uh, that said, at least they did put some lift on the ends so that your thumb doesn't fall off it easily. We have A, B, X, Y. I'm gonna assume this is A, rapid fire, B, rapid fire. Select and start and a menu button to go back to the menu. You know, the construction, even though I said it's really light, which it is, um, it doesn't feel that cheap. And it's got, if you look really close, can you see this? It's got kind of a speckled uh, speckled silver in the black paint. It actually looks really nice from here. Huh. On off switch is on the side here. I know that's very exciting. Where's the volume control? Oh yeah, it would be on your TV. <laughs> I'm just used to doing the handhelds. That's pretty funny. Um, as far as the application of the decal on the front, uh, not real good. You can see there's some lifting around the edges, so the decal isn't put on exactly right. Uh, the decal itself looks nice enough, except for the fact that it isn't put on quite right, so it makes it look a little cheaper. They might have done better just not putting it on, um, but, you know, they did, so it is what it is. Not terrible, uh, just not, it, not as great of an appearance as it could be, but not bad. Um... How's it feel? Oh, I got a feeling, even though I said this D-pad's mushy, it, God, it almost feels flat when I'm playing it. It doesn't feel like it has enough give to left and right. We'll see. All right, let's plug this in and play some games on it. Let's put some batteries in here. Okay, looking at the front of the unit, you can fit your fingernail in here and just pop it open. Works really super easily. I'm gonna put a double A, I'm sorry, triple A battery in here. This is not a rechargeable. If this thing does have a recharging circuit, you absolutely should not plug it into the wall. I don't think it really does. I think they just recommend rechargeables for the sake of the quote environment. So uh, that might just be an environmental recommendation, uh, not a real thing that this can do because you use this one to hook up another controller if you're gonna play multiplayer. Okay, second thing is, Plug that in and then plug the RCA jacks into your TV. All right, now let's play some games. All right, welcome to the Family Pocket main menu. You can choose Chinese or English. I think we've seen this compilation before. It's actually a pretty good compilation of games. It's a 260 and one. I'll scroll through all these. Uh, I probably won't comment too much about it, but of course we got Contra on here. There's a little bit of Double Dragon action if you're okay with this version of it. I've never really liked the NES version of Double Dragon very much, so, you know, that's not a big thing for me. Super Mario Brothers is on here. That's good. Twin B's good to see. That's a good game. Adventure Island's on here. Uh, there are some hacks on here, but most of them are pretty legit. Uh, Gradius is on here. You've got Bomberman on this page. Load Runner, which I probably will show you later because there's something I want to I want to note. The original Mario Brothers, so that's not a repeat. There is an occasional repeat in here, I think, although I'm hard pressed to show you right now. But for the most part, it's different games. Here we go. Spy vs. Spies on here. So if you do have the extra controller, you can play two players. A uh, little bit of everything. I mean, honestly, it's pretty good. Rabbit Village we played before. And that one's pretty decent, so I'm not going to play it here. Pizza Boy, we've also mentioned before on the show. Not bad, as I recall. Oh, Thexter's on here. There's Thexter. That's another good game that's on here. Pac-Land's on here. Um, Penguin Wars is on here, which I really like. Oops. It's one of the things that does like to jump a little bit. Uh, but I do like Penguin Wars, and it's good to see that on there. There we go. We're back on here. And Miss Pac-Man, hey, thank you for putting that in there because I do like to have my classics. So, you know, again, we're going to keep scrolling, but it is a pretty decent collection all over. Or overall. I reversed it. I can't speak English. Do, 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 do. There's some Dr. Mario. Eh, that's not too bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, Galaga is in here towards the end. Oh, there. Next page. What do you know? F1 race is in here. I'm going to show you something about that in a little bit, too. Uh, Excite Bike is on here, which I always call Excite a Bike. Didn't do it this time, though. Ha ha. So I guess I don't always do it. 
Donkey Kong Jr. There's Dig Dug. Not bad. Devil World we've played a few times on this station as well. Another solid game. I mean, it does have a really, really... <laughs> that's an unfortunate name up there. We're not going to mention which one. Uh, it does have a really, really good uh, selection, though. I don't think that it can be faulted on the wide variety of uh, games that are available. Chronica is a great game, too, uh, especially if you know how to play it, <laughs> which I do, which is nice. I don't know how to play it well, but I know how to play it. And not get myself killed right away. Magic Bubble. Isn't that a hack? Does anybody know? Is that a real game or is that a hack? I'm pretty sure that one's a hack. I know a couple of these are. Look at Mad Xmas. Maybe I'll do that during my uh, Christmas episode this year. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Pac-Man. Snowball. Yeah. Rural Goblin. We've played this one before, too. Too funny. Popeye. <laughs> Popeye in English. And there we go, The Archer is the final game. All right, I'm gonna pick five games to show you, make some comments about them. Be right back. All right, we're gonna start with Twin B, and this is because I want to show you one of my biggest complaints about this handheld, and it specifically shows itself in shooters, and that's this D-pad. This D-pad requires a very direct touch in order to pick up your movements. And that that is a big negative. And I kind of felt like it might be like that earlier in the review, and it kind of panned out like that. It did not surprise me at all. You can see it manifested on the screen right now in kind of, kind of jerky movements. You notice how my movements aren't real smooth? And yeah, it, it does hurt the gameplay style. That said, I played a couple of uh, side-scrolling games uh, that were, you know, just kind of jump and run games. And they seem to work fine, but in these shoot 'em ups, it really, it really does do harm to the gameplay, which is kind of a bummer. That said, I mean, you can still play it. It's still an enjoyable game, but definite problems here. Oh, yeah. I do like this game quite a bit. All right, let's go on to another game. This is Low Runner. It's a classic from days of old. I used to play this on the old Apple II. This version of it's really a pretty good version, but it does have something that I need you guys to note. The A and B buttons are reversed on this. You can get used to it. It's not that big of a deal, but it does reverse his digging. So I press uh, the A button and he digs to the right instead of digging to the left like you would expect. And for a few minutes it throws off your gameplay. Eventually you do get used to it. Uh, but it's definitely, it's definitely a big deal. I mean, controls are an important part of this and there's uh, two examples so far where the controls are definitely less than ideal. But uh, notice how my controls aren't as jerky here. Uh, on this, you really just don't notice it as much. Oh, crud. Mess that up. Come here. Drop that gold. Yeah. Dive off. Am I missing one? There it is. And there's the exit. First level is always easy. <laughs> See ya. Yay, let's go on to another game. Let's play some Squoon. All right, so this is another example of some of the control problems with it. Again, I have to be very exact with my D-pad presses to get this to move correctly. And it's always kind of just, uh, it's kind of a little bit off. Again, in many games, it doesn't completely ruin gameplay, but it definitely harms it. And in any game where you'd be required to be 100% accurate and fast in your movements, it's gonna hurt the game. Uh, again, here, 
it's not so super important, but definitely um, in something like Gradius, it's going to be a problem. Ooh. Get him. Oh! Death. Penguin Wars! Alright, here we go. I'm probably going to end up playing this game anytime I see it now. Don't mess me up. And as predicted, uh, the controls are working okay on this one. Uh, mostly because I'm only working on uh, right and left movements. And those, by nature, you make a little bit more deliberate presses out of. It's a little hard to get... Yeah, it's a little bit hard to get, like, any banking going here, though. Here, did some damage to him. Yeah, you're down, buddy. Well, that is funny. I'm kind of uh, expecting stuff to go on that goes on in the new game. <laughs> the remake that's on the uh, Switch. Oops. Well, you go down, fool. Yeah, I think I'm winning that one. And, yep. Pac-Land. This is another one of those games where the controls are reversed. In this case, it doesn't really hurt it too much. Most of the time, you're going, um, you're going forward anyway. And the uh, fact that you have to deliberately press kind of comes as second nature. Uh, if you haven't played this game before, it uses the A and B buttons to move, and you use the D-pad to do your jumps. Uh, so, in this particular case, wow, I'm playing awful. Uh, in this particular case, this works okay. I should have went back and got that. And really, this is a great game. I, you know, it, I realize it doesn't get uh, the highest ratings off of everybody, and it's not everybody's favorite Pac-Man game, but I think it's a pretty good one. Uh, they definitely tried to do something different with the side-scrolling uh, genre. I think it's, I think it's a good game. All right, let's go on to another one. Okay, so here's a game I have a beef with: F1 Race. I don't have a beef with the game, but I have a beef with these uh, clones and their <laughs> their refusal to actually do any quality control checking. All right, so F1 Race has a problem with certain clones, and here it is. Uh, around like the first and second turns, actually any turn to be honest with you, it reverses the controls. And it doesn't do it in the real game. This isn't a real problem that shows up in the game, but it shows up in a lot of these Chinese knockoffs. And yet again, uh, it's doing it right here. Really annoying and makes the game completely and utterly unplayable. Really annoying. So, am I annoyed? Yes. Annoyed. How many times did I say that now? Here's what I've never played on the station before, I don't think. Uh, Joust. And, of course, uh, as expected, this works pretty well on here. Ooh. Hey, I can use the rapid fire and uh, kind of cheat. Kinda. Yeah, that's totally cheating. It has kind of this bounce back effect on the ceiling if you uh, are using rapid fire, which kind of ruins rapid fire for it. But then again, you know, rapid fire is kind of cheating anyway, so. Fair enough, fair enough. Oh, no way, no way. Jeez, <laughs> oh, that's terrible. All right, there we go. You die. Oh yeah. <sighs> well, I sure hope you're not on the station for the professional gameplay. Let's 
do one more. All right, for the last game, let's do some Dig Dug. My understanding is that the NES version of this was never released in the United States, which I think is just a... It's a crime. A crime. They did release that Dig Dug 2 game, but I never really liked that one at all. Yeah, that's it. You're going down. Whoa, whoa. Oh. Mmm, controller let me down there. <laughs> I am clearly pressing sideways and it is going up. What gives? <sighs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Seriously, it's just doing that now. I don't know what's up with that. Now it goes right. What the heck? Is that the same problem that's going on? Alright, so Dig Dug's unplayable. <laughs> Pretty much. It will sometimes go sideways as ordered, but generally not. I wonder if that's the same problem that this has with the F1 game. Hmm, weird. Alright, let's get to the verdict. All right, so the verdict on the family pocket. There it is right there. Uh, it's a rather attractive little device unless you look closely and notice that the sticker application isn't quite right. I really do like the color of it. It's black with some little specks in it. And I really wanted to like the device because I think it looks really nice and clean and it's a neat little thing. Uh, it has a great selection of games and I like that as well. However, some of the emulation is off and Again, I've seen this in other Famiclones, F1 race especially. It has this thing where it reverses the controls partway through. Dig Dug exhibited the exact same problem. That's annoying as well. Finally, uh, the real deal killer for this is the quality of the D-pad. Uh, while it works pretty well on most platform games, on action games or shooting games, it is almost unbearable because you have to directly press on each d-pad corner in order to get it to move properly and it causes you to basically pick up your thumb and set your thumb down uh, to keep the presses going and that means that you don't have very smooth controls and that uh, really is the break point I can put up with most of the other stuff I mean come on I deal with lots of family clones I know how they are but bad controls nowadays just don't happen as often on these. And for that reason, I got to give it a thumbs down. Especially when, for 15 bucks, you can get something like this guy, the GB Station, uh, which, and you know, they don't pay me to say this. So uh, you can get something like the GB Station, uh, which is in the same price range, has its own screen, and the controls work really well. So, oh well, that's how it is. All right. That is it for this episode. I want to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more, and I will see you in a couple days. Bye.